I wanted to welcome you all here today to First United Church of Christ here in Mount Pleasant. Today on this fourth week of Advent, we're reading from the Gospel of Luke. It comes from chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from verses 34 through 56. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called bare. With God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to the word. The angel departed from her. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to the city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe wept within her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are, you, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe of my womb leapt with joy. And blessed is she who believes that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the low esteem, the estate of his handmaid. For behold, and henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of lowly degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his prosperity forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and returned to her home. The Gospel of our Lord. Christ, God, we thank you that we have this time of pre preparation and reflection. Guide us to Bethlehem. We again can witness this immaculate birth of your son Jesus as you come into our lives. Amen. We're almost there. As the uh, choir ethic stated today, we are now in this final week of Advent, and now the words of prophecy and the eyes of the wise look forward to Bethlehem, where our Savior will soon to be born. Our Gospel today takes us uh, back, though, a little bit, uh, to when we would first hear that Mary would be immaculately conceived by God, when Mary would conceive the Christ child within her. But this immaculate conception is only part of the history, it's only part of the story. There was also one more to be born, a prophet, that one who would proclaim that this Jesus that would be born would be the Messiah, the Messiah that was promised to come. As we know, that prophet would be called John, as we know John the Baptist. <coughs> Now this conception too was immaculate, miraculous, conceived by a woman way beyond her years and fertility. And that was Elizabeth, a cousin of Mary. 
she too was visited. And Gabriel, the, the high, the archangel, told her husband Zechariah what was be what would happen. And the two, that is Zechariah and Elizabeth, would too have a son. <coughs> So when we think about this preparation of Christmas, we're not only, not only thinking about the coming of Christ, but also the coming of his prophet, making the way, making the path straight. The two would become the, the driving force of the new age of between God and men. And the two would be come together to proclaim the truth. Now John, we also hear uh, in Luke, uh, as is told to Zechariah uh, and to Elizabeth, that uh, he would turn many sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And he would go before him, that would be Jesus, in the spirit and the power of Elijah the prophet. Now later on, as we go towards Easter, we again hear about John, and we, we know that some folks actually question, is this Elijah reincarnate? John would not say that. He would say he was not worthy, and he would also always put the focus on the true one to come, that be Jesus. So today's Gospel is telling how uh, almost uh, Six months before Mary uh, went to visit Elizabeth, there was this confirmation that uh, she too was carrying a child. And Elizabeth and Mary should go to see her to help verify what was happening. And then the miraculous was not just with her, but also with Elizabeth. So when looking at the time frames about the uh, you know, that time that we're approaching now as we think about the pilgrimage of Joseph and Mary on their uh, way to, uh, to Bethlehem. Elizabeth and Zachariah's son would probably be already, that would be John, would probably be about six months old. But I love the part of the story. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe John, left within her womb. Now there is this special spiritual connect uh, that seems to be with the yet to be born through the Holy Spirit. There seems to be a sense, a spiritual empathy perhaps, that transcends our understanding of consciousness. The divine spirit aware and connecting even before the first breath is made. So evident in this gospel text, Luke, that we read from today. Now in the gospel today, we also hear Mary's response when she, this whole thing just, it just wells up within her, these words, these beautiful words, it's called Magnificent for Mary's song. Um, Mary's response at this, at this first uh, connecting when she's seeing Elizabeth, but really this is one of the few times we find that even though they were born yet, Christ and John together in the same, in the same place. Now, Mary saw this prophetic pro raises an artistic and religious uh, appeal to the moment. It also links the Immaculate Conception of Mary to another another prophet of old. Uh, it connects to uh, Samuel, actually. For Samuel's mother, too, was also barren. And with her deep prayers, she raised her, her grief to God. And her prayers were answered. And if you would look into, uh, you'd have to go to Samuel, the beginning of Samuel, to read this. You can hear the parallel between Hannah's words and Mary's words that we've read from today. So with all of this, all of this, the stage is now set. 
we move forward to Christmas. Now we see that for those, <coughs> through this I hope, that we see that for those who have a mind's eye to see, the miraculous doesn't just happen. Our Lord has a plan. Our Lord has things in order, though we may not get it initially. If we have the faith and keep diligent, know that there is a plan. We have to have eyes to see. We have to strive to have ears to hear and minds to perceive. And we also, if we're diligent, come to know. that just like further along in the Christmas season, others will also be given prophetic, prophetic direction. Even those outside the realm of Israel by a star that leads. What's in the heart? It isn't the title that we're given in this world. What's in the heart can empower us to see even those outside of faith, therefore, can be led to Bethlehem, to Jesus. And with God, you know, the miraculous is real. We have such a, a strong case for that today in Mary's visit with Elizabeth, but also it can be in our world today. The immaculate can happen. We need to be diligent in our spiritual quest to see So we want to Gracious God, in this final week of pilgrimage, help our hearts to be open, to revisit the story of Christ coming to us, but also open to hear how that story continues through our lives as we witness that which is of your divine nature and your love. Keep the spirit within us and guide us that we may be a light to the world too that brings all to Jesus. Gracious God, there are those in this community now who need your help and healing. We ask your grace also to be upon them. People like Mary Beth and Brown and her family, the Shaw family, Jane Altman, the Anderson family, Marie Hirsch, Helen Bellamy, Betty Edwards, Kelly Butler, Deb and Bill Bachman, Lisa Moore, Noah Schrock, Brittany Jacobs, Russ Wick, Ida and Sue Wiltrand, Dan Zoll, Kimmy Cation, and John Gray. And gracious God, we also raise these names now to you in our hearts for your help and for your healing. Gracious God, as you know best, keep help and protect and guide us in your ways. This we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen.